Welcome to the February 24th edition of the PFF Forecast. Still by locating, Eric, you are back in the lovely, the great Queen City in Cincinnati. I'm still in DC. We've got a great show planned today. A lot of fun. We're getting into mock draft season. You and I are doing a mock draft. It's coming out on Monday. So we're prepping for it live theoretically, on this podcast for you guys to listen to. And then we're continuing on with something that I think we're going to really enjoy, which is guessing the 2021 win totals. And we are going to do a couple of divisions, the AFC East and the AFC South. Let's rock. All right, you return safely. Um, I hope you don't have any stories to share about hating people on the airplanes. That's my corner. Don't come from my corner. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I like I, I like I said the last time, I got a uh, first class ticket only because I was irritated. I had to like the the ticket cost more than I wanted it to, and so I felt like the the additional cost was not that much in, in relation. So um, I didn't have to sit any, next to anybody on the airplane. I will say though, I got a little irritated because uh-huh. my wallet during the TSA time, and I know I don't have TSA pre like you. That's like uh-huh. the difference. Yes, my wallet during TSA pre time fell off the conveyor, and wow. I didn't have it at first. And I remember being like, is this really like a, I remember like snapping about the security risk is my little clip, uh, my wallet clip really a security risk because right now I don't have it and I'm going to be pissed. So that's very interesting. I was going to say that you have then cornered the, I'm a airline snob by talking about a first class ticket for the second straight episode. I'm not too happy about that again. My corner, don't come Your for corner. it. Your corner. Well, the but, George, but you don't, I think, but don't, you don't you... have you don't have TSA pre, so I have nothing to worry about. I'm not, you're a, you're a mere plebeian, a peasant, really. George, I, I feel like you're you're not getting the angle I'm playing right now, which <laughs> is taking some heat off of you. No, you're you're a good man. You're a good man. In <laughs> which... case people haven't realized, I am a glutton for hatred and punishment. That's and my... and I am less. I, I do like the finer things in life, but I can do, I, I, unlike you can do without them. <laughs> I, this will be my last aside. Um, the weather got warmer here. It's cracked 60, which immediately made me think of summer. And so in order to remind myself of what it was like, I went back to the last time I enjoyed warm weather, which was you and I on the beach in Miami. Over a year ago. Unbelievable. It's incredible how long ago that was. Um, Man, that was – take me back. Um, we're going to do a couple of things here. We're going to start with a little mock draft conversation. So we have – you and I come together each year, and we do an analytically sound mock draft, which obviously drives people insane because it takes into account positional value and looks at mathematical projection, which doesn't always vibe with what people think. Or If it did, there'd probably be a, an issue with it. Um, but before you and I start collaborating on it, we do our own little bit of, okay, here's what I think is going to happen. Let me see if I can mock this out myself. What do, what do I believe um, should happen with these teams here? And so what we thought we'd do is we'd have a little bit of a conversation about what we've done so far, where are some of the sticky points that we found in the mock draft uh, in the first round, and um, kind of talk it out here just unfiltered and see where we get to and then where we end up with uh, on Monday. Excellent. Yeah, that I, I actually started my process. This is the saddest, George, this is the saddest thing. I'll, and I'll only do this once. I started this process before the Super Bowl. And I having to go back and switch pick 31 and 32 hurt a little bit. Oh, you didn't. You <laughs> yes. jinxed it. I did. I, I, I mushed. Oh. The, so Chiefs Kingdom, I have to apologize again. I oh, mushed no. that entire game. Oh, no. <laughs> we that have was the saddest the part of this Kingdom entire again. thing. You mushed it. You've, I mushed we it. We finally it was, figured yeah, it yeah, out. It's awful. 
So you actually bushed it. That's incredible. Well, then you should be really prepared. Um, why don't we start off with this? Uh, so since you've been doing this for, for over a month now, um, what is maybe the trickiest? We'll start with the trickiest spot for you in trying to figure out what that team should do. I, it it's three. I you know we talked off air about you know Wilson. I actually I think the m- money is moving in the direction of Wilson going two. I found a stale line at one sixty seven uh, for him going two. I took that pretty heavily today. Um, it's minus two hundred on on DraftKings now. We're I'm not seeing it on FanDuel. You know I think it's Lawrence one. I think it's Wilson two. Don't overthink it. It's absurd that Wilson is is in the con the reasons people are giving for Wilson being in the same conversation as Lawrence are absurd. Um, you know, but Wilson does have a really good projection. Uh, and I do think at two, he makes a ton of sense for whomever's is there. I, I have the jet staying there um, in, in my initial thought process. Three can, to me though, I, is the can toughest I just, one. Can I just say real quick, you are underestimating the Jets being the Jets. The Jetsiness? I, the, look, it was only a couple of years ago, Eric, that we sat here, maybe in these exact same positions, and talked about how incredible it would be for the Giants to pass up on a quarterback and instead take yeah. a position player. Now, the Jets may avoid taking a running back. May. I'm, you know, may. They may galaxy brand themselves. May also but, a player on the Jets. <laughs> yes, they're, they're their best one. Um there is a non-zero chance that the Jets stick with Sam Darnold and go tackle here. Like that don't, they don't even trade down. I mean, that mm-hmm. you could, I could get on board with them taking uh or staying with Sam Darnold if they trade down. I, I cannot, I cannot under any circumstance understand how you could stay at that pick and not take a quarterback, which is exactly why the Jets could. But I agree with you at number three. So let me let me tell you what I did. Can I, can I rebut the Jets thing for a second? So my only concern here is, do you know how many wide receivers in in the history of the NFL have been taken at number one? Uh, I don't actually. It's two. Two, I was going to say one. Irving Fryer of my Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Jets taking Keyshawn Johnson in 1996. The... The appetite for, t- and I, number two, I can't actually remember. I, I, I'm just remembering that as an anecdote. So the, the Jets have on offense two really big needs, quarterback mm-hmm. and wide out. I do, it, I think if they didn't take Mekhi Becton last year, Panay Sewell would totally be in play. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they want to deal with the who plays right tackle, who plays left tackle thing. And I don't think that they want to take a wide receiver at two because the league, by and large, will not take wide receivers that high in the draft. Yeah. But I do – and I think a team that trades up for the second pick is not taking oh, Sewell yeah, or one a, of the – A team that trades up is taking a quarterback. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's how it's, I think the Jets – that's yeah. how I think Wilson gets to that pick. Now you could be right. The Jets. No, so could so make I think you make a really good point. A really good point is even a team like the Jets will look at the fact that they took Beckton last year and go, okay, we should not, we're not going to take a second tackle. Um, the receiver thing is interesting though, because and my last counterpoint to this is last year's rookie receivers had a huge impact and it's such a, recency biased yeah. league which is what we're seeing with the quarterbacks everyone is trying to find josh allen patrick mahomes you could go like okay well actually i do want justin jefferson that's Devonte smith or that's jamar chase and i'm taking him and sam donald is going to prosper anyway do they do the teams in the league see that the the best receivers were not even taking taken in the in the teens again i i do agree with you i'm i'm kind of playing devil's avocado there okay so at three here's what i did I said Houston trades with Miami and Houston takes Justin Fields. So, so Houston t- t- gets their pick back. Mm-hmm. This was originally okay. Houston's and so, pick. And so Deshaun Watson is in Miami. Is in Miami. I, okay. I keep coming back to that is the best fit for him. And he has a no trade clause and I think ultimately that's going to matter a lot. And I don't know why Miami would not. You've accumulated draft picks for what other reason? Well, that's a great point. Um, 
Okay. I I actually think the team that trades up for Fields is Philly. Yeah. But I obviously I'm a little so like I think you are number one on Hertz's like fan fan like you're if there was an NFL top shots mm. and and Jalen Hurts was running for a touchdown during one of his moments, like you would outbid me for that. Yes. Even though I would I would put in a bit. You know what I mean? But so, you like Hurts more than I do, even though I like Hurts. So so because my issue was I was looking at the bottom half of the board, right? Or like not the bottom half of the top 10. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking to myself, okay, what is what is Philly going to do here? And what does Miami do? Because if Miami doesn't trade for Watson, the third pick, I mean, are you talking, I, if Sewell makes sense, but I I don't okay. know if you do all the doing that they did just to get Sewell with one of those picks. I And here's the analogy that you're making. And I actually want to get back to the top shots thing because I, I have something prepped for that. Um, <laughs> I can't wait. It's um, it's it's like going to In and Out, and you have a thousand dollar gold brick in your pocket, and you go, you know what? It's the only thing I have. I really want this burger. It's a great burger. I'm hungry. I need this burger. Here's a thousand dollars. That that is what picking Panay Sewell at two or at three, or Devonte Smith at two or at three is for one of these teams because you have to react to the market and the market. If there isn't a team that wants one of these quarterbacks, you aren't looking hard enough. I I just don't know how that's the case. So I would be incredibly disappointed if Miami didn't trade out. And if Miami stays and they don't take a wide receiver, I'm even more concerned because couldn't you have, even if it was a marginal deal, you could trade back and still get that receiver likely with either um, w- with Philly, for example. Yeah, that's my, that was my, um, that was my justification, right? Like if I, you know, even if you don't get Jamar Chase, who I mm-hmm. actually have going forward to Atlanta, if you don't get Jamar Chase at six, after a trade back with, with, um, uh, with Philly, you get Smith or Waddle or Pitts. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, the thing the thing that I really like for Miami in this draft, as far as the receiver position, is all the guys do something a little different than the best receiver on that team, which is Devontae Parker. Now, Parker is a very much a, you know, down the sideline. Like, when you look at the heat maps for Parker, they, they're not congruent with, with two, what Tua does. Right. So if you're if you're going to buy back into Tua this year, which is fine, you have to get receivers that play around in that middle of the field, right in front of Tua's face, and Smith and Waddle and and you know Jeff and Chase too. Uh, but they all play in that part of the field. The more that you do that, the more complete that offense ends up being. Because then you have Parker on the outside, then you have guys like Waddle or, or Smith on the inside. Gasicki is a pretty good football player. Preston mm-hmm. Williams is a guy who made some plays like you're Miami, you're, you're setting yourself up again. Like, look, I think both of us would rather they take a quarterback at three in in a perfect world. You do that. You give yourself the best chance. The second best thing to do. And and probably given that they're not going to take a quarterback is to trade back again, accumulate more assets. So you're in a similar position next year while at the same time, giving to all of the weapons possible so that there's no choice for him this year but to succeed or not to succeed like there's no sam Darnold discussion about like well if we only gave him t- you know a talent around him no like that's it and some people will say sewell is that but i despite what happened to the super bowl it still is wide receivers um you'll notice i'm in washington dc and some people are asking why is that did you go to visit your girlfriend um do you like the district are you looking for some good food uh, no, the answer is in fact that I have given up my apartment in Cincinnati and I'm putting all of that money. Uh, it's being split between scented candles and NBA Top Shot, and I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that takes me forward to the place that I want to be. Uh, I, I I almost <laughs> never mind. <It's laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, if you look at, uh, I thought at least I almost, you can hold a scented candle in your hand, George. 
I can breathe deeply. You can hold deeply. a beanie baby in your hand. I can breathe deeply and watch the highlight, the moment uh, at the same time. And really there's, it's By the all, way, uh, all senses prize, are satisfied. I was in Minnesota last night and surprise fix works in Minnesota. And I did one of those like three or five X, you know, parlays uh, had Draymond over hit. I had, uh, what's his name? Uh, Embiid under was a smash. I went under by 20 points. I had Luca under 30 and a half points. Oh no. And oh, he had no. 25. Oh no. <laughs> I got 30 seconds left in the game. You're the only myself, guy. You're the only guy booing I know. one of the most amazing and thinking, shots. And I'm thinking to myself, speaking of the NBA, I'm thinking to myself, I don't watch very much NBA, but I turned it on last night. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I can see this in my head. They get ahead by a point or two. Luca's the point guard. He's gonna get fouled. He's gonna have three sets of two free throws. I'm fine, you know, yeah. and they get behind. And I'm like, okay, good, good, nice, nice. This is great. And of course they get behind by one, which is also perfect, right? Because there's not going to be like a tie game going to overtime. So I'm sitting good on a five to one here. Luca drives down the court, smashes a three. I'm like, then I'm like, okay, you just need to stop the games over. Boston drives down scores too. It's a tie game. I'm like, okay, you just, all you need is a two point basket here. Luca bangs a three when he doesn't need one to get to 31. I know. It's ridiculous. And it was such a He's sick so shot. Good. I can't, I'll never bet against him again. I love, I, I, I love Luca. You know, what's interesting is um, DeAndre uh, Ayton is having a great career in, in Phoenix. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a, that's that's a Phoenix. joke. Only a, kid growing up liking the Timberwolves could appreciate I mean holy shit at least Marvin ba- uh, Marvin Bagley was not as good either okay here's my tricky spot we I, I have Philly down as a tricky one um I, I have two here though, though and it actually I don't know which one I want to go to first let, let me go to this one first because it's the next one in, in order it's Atlanta I think Atlanta needs to trade down as well and I think Carolina misses out on Deshaun Watson Ultimately, Houston would rather have number three than number four. Miami has a little more trade capital. And so Carolina goes up and gets Trey Lance. And I think this is perfect for Atlanta. And here's why I think it's perfect for Atlanta. Atlanta goes back to, um, is it eight, seven or eight? And would then, um, it's number seven, right? I'm getting Mm -hmm. that correct. Yeah. Um, Seven. And they could then potentially get like a Jalen Waddle. And I know people are going to scream about Atlanta taking an offensive player, but like, why would you not? You just hired an offensive guru as head coach. You have Matt Is Ryan. Is Atlanta's Julio defense Jones, any Tom worse Ridley. than Tennessee's defense? No, no. And they've, been, and like, they've and invested the Tennessee in Tennessee won a division with the offense that Arthur Smith deploys. That, here, that's interesting. So I actually have a couple wrinkles in mind, and they involve Trey Lance. So I want to get your opinion. Okay, I actually have. And I don't want to give it away because obviously we'll end up revising this, but like yeah, yeah, I am get... actually Mac Jones going ahead of Trey Lance. Interesting. Okay. I have Let's Mac Jones it. going to the quarterback friendly, also just friendly San Francisco Bay area. I hate you. At 12. And and you I have, have Trey, Trey Lance, Lance co- coming a homecoming of, of sorts. Wow. I have Trey Lance going at 14 to Minnesota. Wow. I gave Minnesota Christian Barmore just for you. Um, <laughs> and in my notes wrote, LOL, Eric. I, I said, in my I, notes at 14 says, Kirk Cousins is not the answer. NDSU is somewhat local to Twin Cities. Bring I mean, Lance home. You're a disaster. Okay, that's fascinating. Give me, so is th- this is what you would do or what you're kind of thinking teams will do? No, I, so... This is the do our... discourse. Yeah, I I, think, I'm here for it. I think that in San Francisco, so this is what, if I'm San Francisco, I would treat the, the 12th pick like a top shot. I would get Mac Jones, pump him up for four years, and dump him to the dumbest team in the NFL. Hmm. The, and Right? Yeah. Like, we're, we're, and I don't want to trigger anymore, but, like, we're, what, 12 months and – 22 days away from Jimmy G taking a, the Niners to the Super Bowl. And like, I remember it well. And the worst part about that team is that much like Seattle with, with Russ and much like, you know, Kansas City with, with, uh, 
with Mahomes is that the quarterback's going to get the, the money and the rest of the team is, needs to be rewarded for helping carry it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and not mm-hmm. so much for Mahomes, obviously, but like with the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, Chris Jones gets paid, Travis Kelsey gets paid, uh, you know, Frank Clark still get. And then with the Niners, it's like, well, eventually you need to you know, pay Nick Bosa. Eventually you need to pay Fred Warner eventually. And it's like the, the best anecdote to that is to bring somebody like Mac Jones in. And, you know, it used to be in the Bay area that the Oakland A's would take like their third best reliever and pump 40 saves into him and trade him to a dumb team. And like, I think the quarterback position for the Niners is Don't that you type besmirch. of position. Don't you besmirch the good name of Houston street. Okay. Billy Coke. Oh, that's, that's even more old school. Um, Zito Mulder Hudson. Rich Zito Harden, won a world series. Rich Harden, actually. interestingly, was actually my favorite of those A's pitchers. Um, died off too soon. and ended up, ended up from the Texans, um, uh, Texas Rangers. Um, I can get on board with it uh, from an ordering standpoint. If you answer me this question, which is, do you have, what's your level of reservation around Alabama quarterbacks, given how dominant that team was? Is it, because the same questions were there with Joe Burrow. Do, like, is it me not understanding how similar those two situations are? Or um, do you have some reservation? Because that's for me. I have reservation on whether it's Mac Jones. I, or our protections for Mac Jones were better than Tua's were last year. And you had the Devontae Smith right. quote that he liked Mac Jones as a player better than Tua. Um, obviously, the mobility issues are a thing. But like the Niners specifically, their offense – like obviously would be di- extremely dynamic if they had a mobile quarterback, but doesn't require one. And again, like, so, so here's the question I have. Does Joan does, because so you have Lance going very high. Mm-hmm. I see. So the way I see it, I see Cincinnati going after a tackle. Like, I think that makes the most sense. It also is, you know, it also is like just peak Cincinnati, right? You know Jonah Williams. Uh, yeah, but Billy I'm asking. Price. I'm asking what you would do. Yeah, you, you I would mean, take. I think he. I Mac think Jones. Jones over Trey Lance. I think Jones and Lance should go a little higher. But I understand the. So, like, let's say you're you're um you're Dallas at ten, right? Like Dallas at ten's not going quarterback, right? Okay, I I get it. I just Trey Lance. Okay, the, there were there were four quarterbacks. Five, let's just take the top five quarterbacks this year: Rodgers, Brady, Mahomes, Allen, Watson. Okay, one of them is a cyborg who's literally like once in a forever generation type of quarterback, Tom Brady. The other four are revolutionary athletes at the position, and. Mac Jones is not a revolutionary athlete, not just at his position, but like in a pickup game at a park. Yeah. And that's not like shade on, on Mac Jones. Trey Lance is. So if you're one of these teams and I can understand it at 12, but I don't understand it at like say four, why you wouldn't, why you're not shooting for the potentially top five quarterback. And well, that- I don't know that Jones has that in his yeah. area about the one the one quote mistake we made last year in our mock was we didn't have we didn't like herbert enough to have him mm-hmm. go very high yep and i think there are reasons for that and i and i still believe that we will maybe not be proven right but i do think that herbert's rookie season might end up being the shining light of his first few years i <laughs> I think that there are going to be people that take Lance high because as a correction her. for that. Hmm. And I want to avoid that because I still think that the toolsy quarterback is overvalued in drafts and you, you need a situation and granted Atlanta could be this, but like the other thing with Atlanta at four, you know, and maybe when they trade down, you know, I, I get it. And, you know, other teams like, you know, for example, let's say Philly doesn't trade down and they take them at six. Um, where that toolsy quarterback thrives 
is in like a, a system that ends up being made up relatively well for him. When mm-hmm. Wentz did well in Philadelphia, it was because Aguilar finally, you know, got his head out of his ass and played well. Jeffrey like played well for the one season. Ertz was still elite. Uh, and the offensive line was great, right? So you could see the tools come into play and he still needed the statistical variance. When Herbert played extremely well last year for LA, well, you had Keenan Allen. You had Mike Williams healthy for most of the year. You had Hunter Henry relatively healthy for most of the time. You had some young players step up at wide receiver. You know, and, and so when I look at some of these teams here, I don't see that happening. Like Detroit is, you know, Detroit's, for, well, and for one, Detroit has the, the contract of Goff. I, if okay. I'm going to take Lance but, somewhere, I need him to play relatively soon or be so cheap like he would be at 14 for that first year to really not cost anything um, and and have a ready-made like team. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm beginning, Philly's not ready-made. Yeah, I'm beginning to wonder, you know, if we're trying to predict how things will go, um, I'm really trying to figure out, and we're not in our mock, we're going to actually say what we would do, but it's very interesting. Like, how do you think teams will value Mac Jones given – what they saw from Tua, but are they ignoring, you know, what we saw from Joe Burrow, who had a very good supporting cast and came in and played really well. I could, Cause you could see Carolina making a play. You could see Philly it, say those three guys are already off the board. Why would Philly not consider Mac Jones, you know, and yeah. I, I am a huge, or like Dylan Hurts guy. Here's, here's one that makes sense for Lance. I just don't have them there because I, 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 I honest to God think that Denver is going to end up trading like Denver could trade, for, for Watson, but they also could just trade for Kirk Cousins too. Like there's a, an opportunity there, Wow. but Denver at nine, I currently have with Caleb Farley. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. But Trey Lance makes sense there because you have the wide receivers, you have the offensive line improving. Um, you have yeah. the tight ends. I, uh, Pat Shermer did a very good job with Sam Bradford as a young player. Mm-hmm. Um, he's uh, you know, he did well with Case Keenum at times. Like my thing with Lance is, and, and it might just be because I, I'm mostly a statistical guy. Once I adjust for competition and stuff like that, like he's just not, it, it, I, I, it, Trey Lance is always somebody else telling me how great he is. And I, I just don't necessarily see it all that much. My last really tricky spot that I want to bring up were the Dallas Cowboys. But I think I have the best pick of the first round. Oh no, the Dallas Cowboys, because the Dallas Cowboys, let me remind you about the Dallas Cowboys, what they do. They win the Super Bowl in April. They did it last year (laughs) and they're going to do it again this year. Not a tight end, an offensive weapon, Kyle Pitts. He, he gets, you know, slept on a little bit in the top 10. It gets to 10. Everyone's looking at their best available. They go, holy shit. Kyle Pitts is still available. Yeah, yeah. I, and that, one, I, that pick I, is going to be the, a Niners a fan. I, a Niners fan, am sitting there at 12. I'm having heart palpitations. I can't breathe. Sweat is pouring down my face, okay? Because I know the Giants won't take them. Just please, God, please, Dallas, take a tackle, take a defensive player, anybody. And Dallas and Jerry Jones from his fucking yacht, Jerry Jones is going to just rub his hands together. He's going to get the banner printed with fucking. Kyle Pitts and that offense could be unbelievable, unbelievable. Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, CD lamb and Kyle Pitts, Dak Prescott, dude, Dak Prescott would be an immediate MVP candidate immediate. Um, I, I, that I, I one's going to get an A plus from the draft next. My a thousand percent. I have Pitts going higher, but I just value that, that type of playmaker more. Um, Here's the pick I have, and this will surprise people because this is very much a what have you learned this year pick for Mm me. I actually have Christian Barmore going there. And the there are the reasons are many fold. Defensive linemen that can do what he does are actually more valuable than we thought. Um, the absence thereof make everybody on the team worse, including second round pick Trayvon Diggs. They have to play they had to play a somewhat heavy box last season because they were so awful on the defensive line. Um, And that, that made it a lot harder for them to have success on defense. The other thing is, is the way that the league is moving and scarcity. 
So Barmore is literally the only defensive interior player I'd take in the first 50 picks. And, and, and then, you know, the way that things are working out now, George, as you know, as somebody who, whose favorite team got a number one pick for this player, Aaron Donald, 22 and a half million a year, DeForest Buckner, 21 million a year, Chris Jones, 20 million a year. We're going to see uh, this, this off season, we're going to see Leonard Williams. We're going to see other players make that money. You're almost to a point where if you draft, it's like the Bosa situation. Like if Bosa, you know, defensive end isn't as important as we think it is on the field, but the differential between what an elite player makes and what the 10th overall pick makes is so enormous that the value ends up starting to be a positive proposition. So that Mm -hmm. that's one where I think you might be surprised that I have the guy there, but I think in, in the absence of, the top three wide receivers, I'm just giving stuff away. The top three wide receivers, Caleb Farley um, and uh, and the tight end Pitts, gone. Far more to me makes the most makes makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I, I have him. I I have him in the first round, which to me, I, in the first 15 picks, which I thought to me was a big concession. But you've gone above and beyond with your love for the big man. All right. Um, we have we clearly have a lot of debating to do. This is going to yeah. be fun. I, I love mock draft season. Uh, our mock will be up on Monday, and you can go rant and rave and gnash teeth and all that stuff. Uh, all right, let's do some win totals. So let's do uh, let's put a little clock on this. We'll do like six and a half, seven minutes per division, uh, and let's start with the AFC East. Uh, the AFC East. They're going to play both the AFC and NFC South, which is interesting. So they will play um, the uh, the next division we're going to talk about, the Texans, Colts, Jaguars, and Titans. And then they will also play the Bucks, Saints, Falcons, and Panthers. Um, let's start with the division champion, Buffalo Bills. Last year, win total was 10 and a half. They ended up winning 13 games. What did you peg them at? The win total is 10 and a half. Sorry, nine. Yeah. Like that. I think I have them at 10 and a half now. Yeah. I read, I, I read my, you. I read my prediction instead of the, <laughs> yeah. I have a spreadsheet here, a Google yeah. sheet. And I read my prediction. I have them at 10 and a half too. Um, God, what? I didn't look you. Didn't, did you sneak into this uh, spreadsheet? I, no, they're minus, they're minus 159 to win the division on mm-hmm. DraftKings Sportsbook. Um you know, the thing is, is the way win totals work in the NFL is most are around seven to nine and over 10 is reserved for some of the great teams Yep. and they're not, and the 11 and a half are reserved for the mega great teams, the Baltimore Ravens uh, and the Indian and the uh, Kansas City Chiefs from last year. So that, you know, that that's kind of where they are at. I don't think that they're worthy of that quite yet. So that's why I give them uh, the 10 and a half there. Yeah, I was there with you. My biggest question was, we saw this huge boost in Josh Allen's play. But, you know, does that regress a little bit? And the way the reason not that he actually I think he could play better or as well. But the results could regress a little bit. Um, And I just they were so successful this year. I think they're one of the offenses that people are going to study a lot in the off season and do a lot of things to try and, and stop them. And this year, of course, they are the best team in that division. They haven't been that yet. I, I, the last thing that I'll point out here is they went five and one in one score games. And that one loss was the Deandre Hopkins catch. So, you know, they, they were, they performed really well in, in those nail biter games. You could see that regress a little bit too. Just a reminder last year, if you think that that's low, Last year, the Niners win total was 10 and a half mm-hmm. and coming off a 13 and three season, a Super Bowl appearance. Like you're talking about a very similar team and, you know, Vegas just doesn't and Vegas just doesn't hang lines that high. Um, and winning, the Niners winning 11 were, games is hard. Yeah, exactly. So so that I think we're showing the Bills a lot of respect there. What do you have for the Dolphins? So for the Dolphins, I I'm assuming no Watson. OK, um, I have a win I total. Too. With Watson, I have a win total without Watson. The one without Watson, I have, and I really, this one was very tough for me. I went ultimately seven and a half. Wow. Okay. We actually differ here then. Okay. 
I have it, nine. Wow. Without mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson. Yep. And I might regret it. I might okay. regret it, but here's my take. Please. <laughs> New England is not going anywhere fast. Mm-hmm. The Jets aren't going anywhere fast. Mm-hmm. And what you said before the segment, which I think is perfectly sensible, is that d- the divisions that they face are three and one divisions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that gets you to nine? That gets me to nine. Don't you need to have a functioning offense first? But they do. Like down do the they? stretch last year, they were. They do have they a functioning had injuries offense. everywhere. I don't know that they have a functioning offense yet, Eric. Okay. I know that if Ryan Fitzpatrick comes in, they have a functioning offense. I do not know that with Tua, they yet have a functioning offense. I'm not saying that they don't. I do think that here's the thing. And this is how I framed it for myself. If Tua has an average year, how many wins do I think they win on average? And I came out eight or nine. I'm not so I'm not sold on Tua being an average quarterback yet. I'm just not. Yeah, that I mean, I, and I think that that's a I think that's fair. If it's nine, and they don't see the problem is if the number comes out before you know like. If Watson is still on the trading block when a number comes out, you, you've got to consider the, the possibilities there. I think – so if I had – if Watson is is the quarterback, I had 10 and a half. I said basically you're giving them the same respect the Bills would get and you know they're in that same division. They con- they're don't have that continuity though. Do you not okay, – I mean – So we're a little bit off on – well, we're a little off. I think seven and a half is is – I almost, I almost said eight and a half, but I said nine. I stuck my neck out there a little bit, but I mean, they were, they were a really good defense last year too. I expect. Yeah. Some that, that might be the, that might be the, uh, the, the flaw there for me. We'll, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Okay. I have let's, the Patriots. Yep. Six and a half. That's what I have as well. They won yeah. seven games last year, three and four. Probably and lucky to win games. seven games last year. Mm. I, I think they were lucky. And here's, I just want to say this about Cam Newton. Um, I think it's fucking absurd that people don't think he deserves a shot to start at quarterback. There were idiots who saw Tom Brady's stat line after playing with this, uh, maybe an even better Patriots team than the one Cam Newton played with. Certainly a better team than the one Cam Newton played with and went, yeah, Brady's washed. Tom Brady stomped all over the league the next year with a good team. Cam Newton was playing with Jacoby freaking Myers as wide receiver one. Stop it. Just stop it. The Patriots suck. Their team is bad. Really, really, really bad. And if they start Jared Sidham, they might be picking whoever the number one guy is next year. Yeah. Right. Well, and even if, like I, I see on the betting markets and Marcus Mariota is the, yeah. is the favorite there. If Mariota goes to a team with not with like a okay offensive line and no weapons, like that team is going to win three games. By the way, the Dolphins are plus 260 to win the division. I think if I had to bet on one team right now in this division to win, yeah. I, I would take the Dolphins. Uh, I made know. some win total bets today. Or sorry, not win total division. bets, uh, division futures. One that, yeah, that there are some, I think, that have some values. But teams that we're talking about in the top 10, I think a lot of them could win their division this year. And a lot of them are going off at, you know, 10 to 1 or better. So, Jets, I had at 5.5. Same here. I don't think there's a whole lot to discuss here. A, lot, no. a lot's going to change with the Jets. Five and a half is also – five and a half is where I believe the Bengals were last year. Mm-hmm. And and to me, that's like a fair number for young team, decent – like young team with a quarterback that could be okay. You know, like that's fair number. Yep. And I think you could see Salah immediately get a lot of improvement. But winning games, you know, in a division that could potentially have the Dolphins and the Bills – could be really tricky. Okay. Um, anything else to say about these or should we move to the AFC South? No. So we have, we have two disagreements so far, right? You like Washington and I don't. Mm-hmm. And you, and weirdly, we like a team for probably diff. Like you like, I like Miami and you don't Washington. Well, there's I, sort of two great defenses I like with offense that are questionable. Yeah. I like Miami. I just am, you know, I'm not super sold on Tua. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, you had you had Washington at six and a half, and I had them at seven and a half. I, I think uh, Washington also. Those are interestingly two teams that have a shot to get to Sean Watson. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go AFC South here. Uh, let's start with the Houston, uh, the Houston Texans. <laughs> this is the lowest win total I think you'll see in a in a decade. I got it four flat, and I beat you. You got three a, and a half. I have three and a half, and I, I mean, oh, look. I, look you know the profile and courage right there can i can i for a minute muse the the houston texans went two and nine in one score games last year i know they were managed like like if you there sometimes you're on a road trip and you walk into a supermarket like on the way like a gas station thing and like there's no manager there you know they don't have a manager and it's just a fucking shit show that, that's the, that was the Houston Texans, right? It's just like no one knew what was going on. Like, oh, we're out of this? I don't know. Screw it. We're just not going to sell it anymore. That was the Houston <laughs> Texans. I would venture to say that if you replaced Deshaun Watson with Drew Locke last year, the Texans go 0-16 and they're getting Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. I mean, like that, well, you know, the whole like war calculation with him was mostly what? It was mostly like <sighs> – it was mostly what, um, you know, this is actually a seven win team, right? And you're just like, they're just absolutely getting the ass end of variance all the time. Um, and, you know, that was, you know, pretty, um, you know, that was pretty apparent there. He was worth 3.75 of their wins, but they actually like fundamentally were more like a seven win team. Yeah. They, they blew a lot of, a lot of value. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> at four i'm betting the under i mean they have no idea what they're doing none absolutely zero uh let's go to let, let's do the the jags quickly let's get them out of the way here um I, i'm very curious as to what you think of the jags i i i actually look toward this is how i knew the burrow number i looked towards the bengals last year five and a half that's where i have the jags interesting okay i have them at four and a half, and I thought this might be a little low. And I, I kind of, I think I'm siding with you as to that that being the right number. The reason I have them at four and a half is I don't know that we should give Urban Meyer a whole lot of credit for knowing how to run an NFL team. I, I just don't I know. I know. I, I just don't know why there's this automatic. Well, yeah, it's Urban Meyer. He's going to get shit together. It's like, dude, this guy was like talking on a you know, uh, on Fox afternoons on Saturday. Yeah, I know. And like, there's, you know, there's, there's shakeups, you know, well, it was the whole like hiring the, the strength and conditioning coach who was racist. Yeah, right. It, it, it's racist. Like, and then, what like, what had year the, did you get transported in from? Yeah. <laughs> I, you like, know, so like that, that was a red flag for me, man. Yeah. How can you be that tone deaf? So, but that, that being said, they have talent last year, three yep. really talented players drafted high. Um, That's a good point. They they have um, you know I think on offensive line that isn't necessarily as bad as we think. They have weapons on the outside that are pretty good. Yeah, um, Chenault and, and DJ yeah, Chark. DJ Chark's a good football player. Um, you know, there there's some things that they can work with. Um, you put Lawrence in there. They also have the Rams pick. Um, you know, the Ramsey what, pick what from, if, from LA. What if they go sign a guy too? What if they bring Allen Robinson back? Like, I, I do think that five and a half is probably the right they also number. Have the, they have the most cap space in the entire a NFL. Ton, like, a ton. You're, you know, you're the, the, it, not all hope is lost here, which I think is an important thing to, to sort of realize. They went one and seven in one score games, though I don't have a ton of faith that Urban Meyer is coming in with decision making that's going to move that needle. The Let's one and go. seven and one score game things is tricky because that still only puts them at, you know, four and a right. half, five, like yes. fundamental wins because they, they were, that, that just means that they were oh, oh and eight in, in, in games decided by more than one score, which means they're getting their ass kicked half the time. But yeah, I do remember like they lost two games, 27, 25, yep. um, you know, they, they, even with Glenn. They, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. We, we didn't get into that with Minshew in our podcast, but it was clear that they were starting Glennon because he gave him the best chance to lose. And, yeah, and we should have. We and and, and I wonder how like raw that wound was for, for good old Gardner. Let's go Colts. Um, I have the Colts win total at eight. Okay. 
this is this is get me guessing what I think it will be. I was a person who was I I was praying right. Uh, you know that there was that tweet like I'm strongest when I'm on my knee. I was praying for Tennessee to win that game against Houston in Week 17 because I had a ton of Tennessee to win the South. Mm-hmm. The the markets love Indy, love, love Indy, love Indy. So all the Tennessee numbers were short and and you could hammer them and they were great. I think it's going to happen this year. Indy right now is the favorite on DraftKings to win that division. I, I, I have it circled here. The Titans are plus 120. And I want to talk about the Titans here in a second. Yeah. Um, I okay. have Indy at nine. I have okay. Indy at nine. And I'm gonna, I, I think that that's where it'll be. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it to eight and a half. Because I wrote, I had eight slash eight and a half. I know that we're trying to kind of guess where the market comes yeah. out. Eight and a half to me is the fair value. Carson Wentz and the Indianapolis Colts. Nine wins would be a pipe dream, in my opinion. I, I just you have to have so much projection there. They went six and one in one score games last year. Um, that was with Wiley Coyote, Philip Rivers. Um, I don't know, man. I, I just Michael Pittman's not giving his number to Carson Wentz. Like I'm concerned about that. Yeah, it was. <laughs> If it's nine, that's I'm, a really I'm, like tough one. I, if it's um, nine, I'm betting the under there. I, I think there are a lot of question marks, and there should I, be. I think I like under two. The problem is, is I'm just skeptical of Tennessee at, um, you know, without Arthur Smith, okay. the defense is still garbage. They might get rid of Malcolm Butler, who was honestly their best, their only good defensive player last year. Um, so I don't, this might be the worst division in football. We've said this for years and they always produce two playoff teams somehow. I know. I know. And it's like, but I, I don't like it. I do have Tennessee at nine. Okay. I have Tennessee at nine and a half. Okay. And I, I think I understand. I think it's patently ridiculous if the Colts and the Titans had the same win total, but this is, this is interesting. Arthur Smith gone replacing him is former tight ends coach, Todd Downing who has been the Titans coach in Tennessee and the offensive coordinator for the Raiders. I am a little concerned, and here's why I'm really concerned. Arthur Smith made magic with very few passing plays. It takes kind of some wizardry to do that. I I don't know if Todd Downing has that, you know, and if they just, if they just all of a sudden go from being the best and most efficient passing team on first and second down to the 15th, What's going to happen? Our, um, our new colleague, uh, he's been with us for a while, but he just wrote his first article, Lao. Um, you you follow him on Twitter. He's at like the 902137 Twitter handle. Um, he wrote how the running back discourse changed a little bit because over the last few years, running backs have been able to repeat past performances. And he went back a little further and showed that that was mostly a statistical anomaly over the past few years. Uh, Todd Downing from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, you know, you know, one of us hashtag, but he has struggled in sort of like, you know, these offenses, he took over as the Oakland Raiders offensive coordinator in 2017, a year after Derek Carr in 2016 was, uh, you know, an MVP candidate. And that, that went South. Um, It does not have the greatest track record as an offensive coordinator. So that's something to watch. The other thing, and this gets to Lau's article, the wheels might fall off of Henry and like, and just because he's had two straight good years, he's a running back, like gravity still works. And if, if the wheels fall off of Henry and they still try to feed him the football, it might end up being a disaster. Right. So that, to me, that's the tail risk with Tennessee. No Corey Davis possibly too. And he was a big time player for them this year. I think there's many reasons to see, potential for Tennessee and Indianapolis regression, which would leave this division. I'll say this. This is how I'll close it out on this, this division. This has NFC East from last year written all and, over yep. it. And you know who the, you know, who the Eagles are, the Colts at nine win total of nine might, it might be, we might be mid season and looking at ourselves and being like, George, what we really lost in the Philly win total was that we didn't bet our entire house on it. I remember we we did love the football team though, and and that yeah. that was our way of of fading the Eagles. That paid off. All right, this was fun. We'll do a couple more um, on Sunday, uh, hopefully, and then we'll get back to the guests next Wednesday. Um, and I'll, I'll be with you in person. We can share the space together. So don't miss me too much. I'm excited.
Thanks for hanging out, guys. We'll see you all on Sunday night. Peace out.